you're a famous actor now. And in order to be a famous actor, you actually don't have to be good. There are many examples of this throughout all of Hollywood and even not out of Hollywood. There are many working actors today. Only five of them out of the bunch are actually any good. So it doesn't really matter. This video doesn't matter. You don't have to know anything about acting to do acting. You also don't need to know anything about anything to do anything. And that's probably like, if there's a, a, the main lesson, the main takeaway this, for this video that I'm gonna say at the very beginning of it before getting into anything, you don't have to know or understand or even have a good intuition about anything to just kind of do it. And I don't want you to feel like, you know, inhibited or held back in any way from following your passions or even like, just like the passing things in life that you're just like, man, that's really cool. I wish I could try that. You should just do that anyway. And you shouldn't seek anyone's advice for how to do it. And actually it's a red flag if anyone is ever like, you know, trying to get your attention and telling you, hey, this is the way that you need to do the thing that you're going to do. You don't listen to that person. They're probably not having your best interest at heart and probably just around the corner, they're gonna try and sell you something like some course that is going to directly benefit them. And that's probably just malicious. But that be, that's not, but that's not me is, is, what I'm, is what I was beginning. We've all watched things before, whether it's movies or TV shows or those TikToks you like so much. Everyone feels like, I think in the back of their minds, like they see acting, you know, it's something that's been in your life, all of your life. And you just see it on the screen, you see people doing it. And it's just so easy. And you're just like, I, I could do that. Give me a try. Put me, I, I could figure it out. And some people, when they make that assumption, they're right. Acting's not hard. It's pretty easy. I don't think that you have to be professionally trained in arts and that kind of thing, because there are plenty of examples where people just do it anyway. Uh, might get some flack for that, but I just don't want you to waste your time and money anywhere. I think that something that benefits people, artists, creatives of any kind is definitely just experience. And you can get that experience in many forms. Most of it you can do yourself. Uh, and I think everything else is just noise that people are trying to get in your heads. That being said, let's get to one. You think too much. This is the problem with your acting. You're supposed to be just there doing it and being it. Example, you're, the scene is you're at a coffee shop talking to a friend and the line is like, hey man, how, how, how you been? And you can just like say that, like you can just say, hey man, how you been? And yet you have so many actors these, day, these days and they're just like, they're getting their script. They're seeing a line that means nothing. They're taking all these breaths beforehand. And they're just like, they're not being there and present in the moment. They're just in their heads, just like. Hey man, how you doing? You know, like, it's just like, there, there's so much you don't, there's pretense and stuff you're attaching to it. And really there shouldn't be. I've done this before. Like the worst case of me doing that was when I went to, I, spoiler, I went to uh, college for acting. Was it the best decision of my life? Probably not. I still have student loans that I haven't paid off. <laughs> Probably never will. I'm 89 years old. I'm an ageless being that throughout all of time, this was supposed to be my lesson and I still haven't learned it. But eventually I will learn it and then the curse will be broken for most of humanity. All that being said, you have someone speaking with full authority on something that probably should have never been given any level of authority to begin with. Politicians, can I get a hoorah in the back? I'm all, all I'm saying is that maybe that's the way most of the world is. You just have confident people who are, you know, got their silver tongues convincing everybody, hey, I know, I know what's going on. No, not necessarily, maybe a little bit. Ooh, charisma. So I, I was in school um, and I was just super in my head and thinking about stuff way harder than I ever thought about it. When I, when I, when you first start acting, you have this sense of a child and you're just kind of playing around and you're messing around with your friends and you're saying silly things to make each other laugh. And then you're just like, huh, I think I'm going <laughs> to, I think I'm just going to say this line like this. And then you have a professor just like, don't say it that way. That's not honest. And then you're just like, well, I, <clears throat> 
it felt like it was coming from an honest place for me. I said it how I would say it, but also like in a way that I thought would be fun. And there's like, don't, no, don't do that. Because here's the thing about it. If you, if you say it like that, then how, how uh, it's, di it's disrespectful. It's basically, you know, it, it just feels wrong. So as a consequence, like the whole point of acting is you're supposed to be able to follow your impulses. Like right now I should be able to be like, you know, and like I should be able to feel fine about that. But when you're put underneath someone else's microscope and they're watching the work you're doing and they're just judging every single second of it and they're just like, mm, nah, see what you just did took me out of it. Do you think maybe possibly that's a recipe for someone to be completely? I'm so sorry, little one. Don't you think that's a recipe for someone to be completely constricted in their body and in their choices and identity and be completely confused and overthink every single decision they make and not only just in the scene but in life because they've been forced into this very um, vulnerable position where they have to overanalyze every single minute detail of the thing that's going on? Don't do that. When you get a script... Or if you're just doing anything, if you're filming, you have a funny TikTok idea. Just film it. I'm tired of you not doing it. You have funny thing. You have something that you are procrastinating on artistically. Just do it. Stop thinking about it. I've never done that. And I'm not yelling at myself right now when I say it. I'm talking to you, the audience, the person watching this video. Cutie. Anyway. I have notes for this video. That's how serious I'm taking this and how much I care about this. And you should respect me for it. What's that over there? Cause, cause last video, we got a little off the rails, okay? And this one, we're right on topic the whole time. Okay, so that's the first thing. You think too much. Don't listen to, I've already gone through the pain of years and years of just looking around at the people and taking, thinking I'm not okay and thinking everyone else gets it. Yeah, everyone else gets it. And, and, and if I just like, absorb things like a sponge, I, I can get to the truth. You're just, you're good, man. You're The way you are is good. Be that, be that thing. And honestly, in a lot of ways, you probably understand things that people with years of experience don't understand because that's how valuable you are right now, okay? And that's not hippy dippy stuff. I hate when stuff is just put off that way. You are cool and a worthwhile artist because of your individual perspective. And do not let that part of your head be like, um, oh, but if everyone's special, no one is. I'm making fun of you. I'm making fun of that part of your head. Stop saying that to yourself. You're overthinking the stuff. That's just another excuse. Do the thing you want to do and make it. Oh, there's a little kiss for your inner child. A soft one, a gentle one. Give them a hug too. When was the last time you meditated and like actually like patted yourself on the back and been like, hey, we're not doing too bad. Show yourself some compassion, you demon. <clears throat> All right, moving on to number two on the list of five. Uh, okay, the note I have is you don't believe it. I, I, I also said, which shows how self-important I was, I wrote a note for this one. Performing is a competition where if you're boring yourself, you're already losing. Wow, aren't I an elitist poopy? But no, I mean, I do agree with past TJ in that this is a classic thing in acting where it's just like, if you're in a scene, I guess it also kind of goes into overthinking, but that's only like one parallel detail of it. There are millions of other ways you can get in your head, but like, it basically goes into, if you're able to convince yourself that you feel a certain way about something, it stands to reason that you'll be so wrapped up on the framing of your mind on that thing that the people watching you who are meant to believe it will also believe it. A good example of this is, I found for me, characters help me get there. It's a lot harder when you're trying to strip everything away and just kind of be like, hey man, how's it going? Going back to the original thing, right? Versus when you're a character, you can kind of get wrapped up in the character and then you're not like disassociating and looking outside of yourself. You can just kind of be like, hey, man, how's it going? Did you have did you have a good day at school? And even that was like horrible, right? Like you hated that person. However, I wasn't thinking about how I was delivering that line. I was thinking about what a doofus that little character guy was. And that was fun. And that was a good way to reframe my mind away from the stress of, oh, gosh, I have to go into actor mode and be good actor. No. Don't be yourself, which this is going against what so many people have said 
to me in my past, being yourself in acting is overrated and I don't appreciate it. I believe in actors who play it safe and actors who take risks. And that's the only thing I believe in actors wise. And those are the only two types of actors. And guess what? Depending on what day, you can be both. But yeah, just do stuff and like keep yourself entertained. If what you're doing is basically lighting up parts of your brain that aren't causing you anxiety and inner turmoil about like, oh gosh, I hope no one is like thinking about what I'm doing in a certain way right now. It's in a negative light. You're probably going in the right direction. Get out of your head and into your kissy lips. Mama, mama, mama. Did I end the other, did I end the last bullet point also with like some kind of kissing thing? I have some kind of fixation here. Don't know what it is. I'm really glad I took notes for this video because now we're moving on to number. Do you guys ever have trouble making a three with your hand? I don't know. Next bullet point I had is you're flat. No levels, no range. I'm starting to understand that a lot of these are kind of in the same vein. Like, acting's a lot of like a vibe and like a feel kind of thing, right? There are a lot of actors, I won't name names, but this goes back into what I was talking about, you know, actors who play it safe, actors who take risks. There are a lot of actors, I was one of them in the past, you have a line, you're in theater, you do a play 52 times, you always say it the same way. It's also just like you have a line and it's a different circumstance, a different scene, a different play, and you're just always monotone delivering things the same way. Because somewhere along the line, you cracked the code on acting. You figured it out. Uh, and uh, you did it is, I'm being sarcastic here. But you think, oh, I found something that works. This is the way I did it before. I'm gonna keep doing it this way. And that's where you kind of fall into the whole typing thing, which we don't have to talk. We can talk about typecasting and how I feel about that some other video. But, 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 but people are going to type you into roles and decide what vibe you give off arbitrarily. Don't do that to yourself. Um, approach a character or approach a role with new and vibrant life and be excited about it because, haha, I get to play pretend. I got to do that when I was a kid. Then I didn't get to do it for a while because adolescence was horrifying and terrible for everybody. Uh, and now I get to rekindle my inner child in order to follow my life's journey of being a self-actualized creative or artist. And that's an exciting, fun thing. Let me tap into that. Let me not be one note and boring. So you can have high highs and low lows. You can mix it up and do different things. And especially in auditions, it can be a lot of fun to find different colors. Think of yourself like, uh, I use this metaphor all the time when I'm talking about art, but you know, you're an artist, but you're kind of like flicking your brush at the painting, right? And you're grabbing all these different colors and it's like, it's fun and fast and loose. And eventually your director can kind of rein you in. When you pick out the actual takes for a movie, you're kind of reining it in. You're deciding, okay, this is the color. This is the stroke we're going for. But in general, play fast and loose. It could be everything. Why decide on something early when uh, 10 more iterations of it, you could have found something that feels even better. You play so boring, okay? Stop doing that. Just have fun with it. All right, now now, now we're on to number four. Man, so hard to tell how long these videos will be. Uh, and this will be interesting because I don't understand why I wrote this down, but I'm going to trust my past self here. You're trying to emulate something, you're not. However, there's still growth potential here. Okay, so this kind of goes into the whole um, fake it till you make it of everything. You know what I'm talking about. Man, I've kind of been, a, I got super cozy there. I wanna, I wanna sit engagingly for this one. You have this idea of acting and you have people that you've seen that have impressed you. For example, before I ever acted in anything, the first real thing I acted in that I classify was a musical at the end of my freshman year of high school. I really looked up to the upperclassmen years before even doing it. I remember the first show I saw at my high school where I ended up doing auditions. I saw shows there when I was in like elementary school and into middle school. And I was just looking up at these people. They seemed like rock stars to me. I was like, wow, this is so amazing. 
and there was a thing they had and it wasn't there were the kids who were good actors and there were the kids who may or may not have been good actors but they had stage presence and that is like that's goes into what i was talking about earlier in the video it's charisma it's just like it's this sixth sense intuitive thing that you can't teach and you can't really describe to someone. It's just when someone is doing their thing, something about it captivates you. And there is no other option to you but to digest what they're putting down. Your eyes are just on them and you're eating up every single moment. Sometimes they're saying stuff and they're the focus of the scene. Sometimes they're not. And you know what? Insecure artists and directors will call those sorts of golden little ponies scene stealers. And they'll say it in an undercutting way. But here's my answer to that. How about we just teach everybody to get to that same level of just like radiating that kind of energy and then we'll just make better art. How about that instead of undercutting the folks who are just already there? My opinion. My opinion, my opinion that you should take as fact, because I know more about this than anybody else by my program. Anyway, I'm going back to this one and I'm going to be a little self-deprecatory for a second. You're trying to emulate something you're not, right? I've always suffered from anxiety. I can't know if you can tell from the way my videos, I'm always jumping from thought to thought spiral and all that kind of thing. It's a blessing and a curse, but for a long time, a couple years, certainly when I was first starting out in high school theater, I w didn't get it. I really liked it and I was really excited by it and, and I wanted to get it, but I just, I just didn't get acting. I was in a bunch of shows and I was rigid and I was like, I, I think I know what this thing is. I really want to, but, but I just, I kept trying and I kept failing and I just, I just didn't feel good about it. And then I remember at some point I was in... I was in ensemble in some musical, I think after like my, my sophomore year and I just tapped into it and I was like, oh yeah, I think I'm just supposed to be having fun right now. I think I'm just supposed to be having, oh, like those upperclassmen I looked up to who just seemed to like, kind of like let loose and it kind of seemed like one big party when they were performing. Oh, and then like I started doing that and I was like, oh, oh, this is actually, oh, we're supposed to be having fun right now. And then I internalized that, like literally that one feeling. And it was everything after that was like night and day. I was like, oh, the whole point of when you're on stage or when you're doing art or, you know, you're drawing, you're sculpting. The whole point of it is the pursued passion, the enjoyment, the road, the just like the presence of mind to just have a ball, have a blast and share it with others and share that abundant positive energy with the people in the room or the, the viewer or anything. You're supposed to show up for yourself, which in a lot of life, you know, we could all be better with this of like showing up for ourselves and like doing right by it. But if you can do that in art, you're basically just healing yourself and you're healing the others around you. And that's why I love and adore art so much. And I would have never been able to get there if I didn't have a bunch of people to look up to who they had people to look up to who somewhere along the line that ball got rolling and someone figured it out. Who knows who chicken and egg thing, but it's just one big collective of just teaching by doing versus just uh, someone sitting you down and explaining something to you and your voice or, or your inner thoughts just kind of, you know, you're zoning in and out. You're just like, oh yeah, I'm picking up, you know, and you're going back and forth. I don't think that anyone <clears throat> by any means has to be an artist or has to find some kind of, you know, specific like creative hobby in life, but I definitely hope for anyone watching this video that you have something like that, that just like it sparks that just, um, that light in you, that uh, just like it, it makes you feel alive. Um, and for us actors, that's what performing is. 
we're just attention lovers, some would say. Uh, but I would like to think it's just because we're trying to chase that dragon of um, being as cool as the people we've always looked up to. Number five. You're afraid. Life is so... <laughs> Can you imagine? No, it's... it's um. Wow, I said, talk about being a hyperactive kid and eventually internalizing feeling annoying and unwanted and bothersome. But unfortunately for art and creativity, this stifled, restricted flame is exactly what you must tap into to soar like an eagle into the universe. Wow, that was a manic episode. You're scared, and we all go through some level of trauma, specifically through childhood, especially those of us who are, wow, just like we come out, and we're just like, wow. Zowie, look at me. Um, society and culture, um, depending on your upbringing and your parenthood and family and all that stuff, a lot of people don't like all that energy. I was the youngest of four siblings, um, and whether this was truth or not, I took away from my childhood from the people around me that I was too much and I was too loud and I was too this to that to blah 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 i just felt like everything about me was wrong and i would hazard a guess that i'm not the only person who is now an adult who somewhere along the line still kind of feels that way deep within and that's what art's all about is just like you're holding on to something that you've been holding on to for so long and you don't even remember exactly why. The only whys you remember are the ones that you've kept telling yourself. But those are just the ones you remember. I think all of it's a lot deeper than that. It's deeper than a lot of us can understand. Um, that's why you should find mental health things that help you. I've I've had my own mental health issues. Lord knows. Um, I've gotten a lot better but there's still a lot of work i need to do but this is all tying into you know to be a better artist you need to be a better healthier person and certainly when i was younger i was just kind of like throwing myself at things i was bullheaded and i was like i don't care i don't feel good right now but i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna do it good and everyone's gonna like me for it and everyone's gonna see how good i am at it and da 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 just workhorsing it and that's just, one, unsustainable. And to be fair, a lot of my um, my mentors that I'm so quick to badmouth, including like instructors back in um, college, I paid for majoring in theater. Um, they also parroted this thing of just like, at the end of the day, you need to take care of yourself before anything and be healthy and, you know, don't get lost in the sauce of all of it. That was a long roundabout point talking about myself to come back to. You're probably scared. I mean, that wraps up kind of everything in this video, right? You're whether it's overthinking or you're just like you're thinking about like, this is what a good actor would do right now. Your mind is just focused on the wrong things. And I think that's what's upsetting to me is because it's this again, sixth sense thing that I've just developed in myself over, you know, I've been doing this stuff for most of my lifetime now and just observing and, you know, being an art, so much of being an, an artist is just actively observing these things that we're passionate about. Right. And I just like, I'm able to pretty easily see in others when they're, <laughs> when behind their eyes, they're experiencing that anxiety and kind of like, trapness that I myself have experienced before whenever I see it I'm just like no do it better like you don't have to maybe that's what it is you know it, it's not like it's not like a criticism but I think other people even to the untrained eye you pick up on it sometimes when you just see it out in the wild and you're just like no man that's not it you, you're not getting it just uh you just want to kind of give them a hug Cause it, cause it's just like, it's so hard and you have to be so vulnerable and it's just like, you're, 
in a fragile place of mind and body and spirit and everyone's looking at you and it's not an easy place to be in but it's also all subjective one person's perfect acting is another person's wow i could never believe that so i think i said this at some point in the video but i think it would be better for you and those around you if you stop focusing on whether or not you may or may not suck at acting or suck at whatever you're working on um and you just embrace that it is what it is and you'll just keep doing it and eventually if you just keep doing something you're going to be surprised You're just going to surprise yourself. You're going to be able to look back at the things you've done and be like, wow, I really liked that. I really didn't like that. Um, and maybe you won't be able to do that next week. But somewhere along the line, um, I hope that you're able to look back at the things you've achieved and appreciate the things that went really well for you. Because they were things that only happened because you really cared about them. That's right. Classic TJ subversion of expectations. I came in really hot and I was like, like the classic YouTube negative five reasons that you might suck. I don't even remember what the title of the video is. You might suck at acting five, five reasons for them. And guess what? I hope that you came out of the video feeling a better person. Take care of yourselves and continue having a lovely life. And if you're not having a lovely life, I hope it gets better.